Hi guys, I wanted to show you how to set up a simple application. It's a Create React app web application that uses Firebase authentication along with the Google authentication provider. So if I, uh, I just refresh it here and you can see that it's, it's uh, console logging out every time the authentication state changes. Right now there's no user defined. So it says the auth state is null, the user is null. So it's going to go in and um, I click the login button. It asks for my email. It's going to ask what kind of an account I have. It's going to ask for my password. <clears throat> and then it's going to log here. It's doing my two step verification. Okay, so I got to pick up my phone and I've got to click that I want to do this. Yes, it's really me. Okay, perfect. And it's going to go ahead and log me in. And it even shows my, my picture. So I want to step by step sort of show you how that works in the code. So I've made the minimum number of changes to the default Create React app. I've imported some uh, functions from Firebase Auth. Uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm using every single one of these. So you'll see how that works here in a minute. Of course, we initialize the Firebase application just like the uh, previous videos that you've seen and we pull in the Firebase config and we call initialize app with that Firebase config. So this is just like the earlier video where I was showing you how to connect to the Firebase database. We're going to get the authentication module and we're going to get the Google Auth provider. So this gets the authentication module that you can use with any provider. You can use with Twitter, with GitHub, with whomever, but we're going to get a particular provider, which is the Google Auth provider. That's going to be our provider. Now for my app component, <clears throat> I am um, defining two state variables, a token variable, which I'm going to use to store the token, which I could use to, to do other things on behalf of the logged in user, and the actual user object that includes things like the user's email address, the user's display name, and the user's the URL to the user's picture. I'm going to define some functions to handle a sign out request and to handle a sign-in request. And I'll open these up in a minute and show you how they look inside. But basically, they're just functions that handle sign-in and sign-out. And I'm defining a use effect, and this one's pretty simple. This is the use effect hook that, that uh, gets launched when the application's mounted. <laughs> and it basically is subscribing to auth state changes. And that's the one that's putting out this message, auth state changed uh, null, and then it said, auth state changed and it put out the user object. And so um, this is the console log. Anytime the authentication state changes, it's um, printing out the, the user that gets authenticated. And then we're setting the state variable user to whatever that user is. So this state variable, this use state that we're using to keep track of the currently logged in user is getting triggered by these on auth state changed uh, the, we're subscribing to notifications for the auth state changing, and that's the function that gets called whenever the auth state changes. So the application is very simple. I just check to see if the user is defined. If it is, I say logged in. If it's not, I say not logged in. That's what produces this logged in message here at the top. Then if, it, if the user is defined and they're logged in, then I'm going to go ahead and display the display name. I'm going to say how long that token is. In this case, it's a 163 character long token. I'm going to <clears throat> display a, an image, which is the photo URL of the user. And I'm going to create a button that calls handle sign out request if they click it. On the other hand, if the user is not defined, all I do is display a button that has this handle sign in request if they click it. So you can see that explains the behavior. If I click log out, I get logged out. It says not logged in. I click log in. Now it's going to remember all the stuff I just typed in because it's smart that way. And it's going to, I don't have to type it again. <clears throat> and it's going to log me back in. I can log out and log in and so on. So you see in my application, if the user is logged in, auth state change is going to get called. And notice auth state change is getting called every time I log in and log out. I log out, I get notified. I log back in again, <clears throat> I get notified. So your application will be notified anytime the user changes their authentication state. You don't actually have to handle that yourself. 
Now the question is, how does that handle login and log out work? Well, handle sign out is quite simple. It simply calls the sign out method that we pulled in from Firebase Auth. And when it's done, it sets user to null. Um, on the other hand, the handle sign in, it's a little more complicated. It calls sign in with pop-up. That's what produces that pop-up window. <clears throat> then it uh, goes to the Google Auth provider and it asks for the credential. If the credential is there, it sets user to the user that's defined in that credential. And it sets the token to the access token defined in that credential. If there's an error, it right now it just puts up an alert and says, oh my golly, there's been an error, but I haven't experienced that yet, so I don't know. Um, you might want to do something more clever than this, uh, put up a more detailed message about the error or whatever. But that's basically it. So it's really quite easy to get Google Authentication working with Firebase. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. It should be fairly straightforward to integrate this into your application. Talk to you guys soon.